give you Cal Gibbs. All right, there we go. Yes, sir. How are you? Good. So nice to see you. Welcome back, Richards. Do you, do you ever, first of all, it's lovely to see you. How are you? I'm terrific. Yeah. I'm tired, but I'm okay. I mean, you're working a lot. Yeah, too much. Yeah. My husband says too much. What, what, why? I don't know. Oh, as the Greeks say, diaphysi. I have appetite. Right. I guess that's one of the great things about being alive is when you just don't feel like you're excited to do the thing I that am, you love. I am. I am. There are things that um, really matter to me and um, projects that come up. And So you, you look at the story, though. I mean, it's this idea of working in the field of... You're dealing with abuse and trauma and literally sex and violence right, and the right. aftermath of it. Because much of what we see on television is the actual act and the lead up to the act. But you're dealing with the aftermath. Was that the kind of stuff that you wanted to dive into? Well, let me tell you, I, I've, I've raised a lot of money for domestic violence. It has been something that has mattered to me a great deal. And I've gotten to know a number of people in it. And this is in the States. And especially Jersey, where I had a theater and where I lived for about 27 years. So um, the idea of doing something like this really mattered to me. It, it wasn't just another job. So we're kind of in an, if we do it right, in this really new enlightened age. If you think about even in the conversation about marriage equality and the LGBT rights over the last 10 years, think of the changes just in the last five, six I years know, alone, I right? Well, look what's happened in the United States. It's, it's kind of amazing. I mean, it was the people that said they wanted these changes. It wasn't the politicians. Yeah, they didn't want the changes. Yes. Well, they're always afraid. They're afraid that they'll lose popularity. They're afraid they'll lose power. They're afraid they'll lose the constituency. How do you get to become the one one of the icons in, in, in the gay and lesbian community? Is it because <laughs> is it because you played Cher's mom? Icon, is that why? Okay, good. I'm an icon. You are. I'm are you icon. kidding me? Did you hear that? An icon. Yeah. <laughs> you are. But think about it. Your series on Out TV. Uh, think about Cloud Burst. Think about all Cher's mom. I mean, that is super going to get you in the gay community right away, right? Yeah. So it's just like, was it always part did, of your consciousness to do this kind of stuff? Are you kidding? No, I never. I was always looking for the next good part and the next... I think what happened was the Tales of the City did it. Armistead Mokin's book, yeah. right, yeah. What a I'm, writer. Oh. And he's got a new book coming out. And, and, and hopefully a movie will be made of it. You have, in your last few years of your career, the graphic sex scenes, the things that you're doing. <laughs> Could you imagine that this is what you'd be doing? I mean, you're no. still a young woman, but... Yeah. <laughs> No, I, if you told me that these... I wouldn't even have imagined that this material would be available. Right. I mean, it takes a, a daring, really fine writer to put this together. Yeah, and to walk yeah. up to Oscar winner, to walk up to Olympia Dukakis and say, this isn't... Because it's... What I liked about the sex scenes is they're not stylized. It's just raw. It's right there. Right. And did you have, do you have any hesitation to do that kind of stuff? No. Not with Tom Fitzgerald. I trust him totally. We're going to play you a scene, and you have to tell us what happens next. Oh, okay. okay. I'm talkative, are you? <clears throat> you want to talk? I'll talk. I talk all day. <laughs> but I think you should be more concerned with what I might put in my mouth. <laughs> what one. comes out of it. Oh. That one, yeah. <laughs> I know what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I really. Uh, do we act? Is that one of the scenes where we get together? That's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Oh, I can't believe that picture. Oh my God, is it up? Are you yeah, showing it? it? We'll oh it my yeah. God, that is the. Uh, you have to admit that's a funny picture. Yeah. And that's Chekhov's, um, I think it's the seagull. I'm playing a yeah. god in a... And I, I took a... I researched it and looked for hairstyles that Russian actresses who played the part... The only problem was they had long, luscious hair, 
so that the knot in the top was big and stuff. I mean, this is absolutely comic. <laughs> and look at how badly I did my eyebrows. I mean, that is really <laughs> awful. I was, I've never been good at eyebrows. You, they're great. Well, well, Who do, do you do them? The pro, the, your pros. Do I, they did it. Oh, I mean, I, I still, my hand goes, I can't do it. That's a but beautiful that, picture. That's really it. Do you remember those times? Like I remember that guy, Jacques Andre. Yeah. He was a stage manager for Ed Sullivan. He got me a couple of jobs with Canadians. Those two comics that would come down from Canada. Wayne and Schuster? Je yes! Yeah, yeah. I was on the show yeah. with the two of them. I got, for me, minimum, there was like, um... It's great, you're on Wayne and Schuster. That's enough. That's it, yeah. That's fantastic. That was, what, 1957 in Boston? Yeah. Where that was. So if you... You don't, you don't have any more like that, right? That's... <laughs> uh, okay. Listen, we have dignity over here. There's nothing to be ashamed of. That's incredible. I was thinking about you in the context of, I was trying to explain to somebody about Moonstruck, because we love it, because Norman Jewison and, and the performances. The best. You and John. Isn't he the best? He's amazing. But you and John outside that, that real huge moment. But also there's this moment where, where Nicholas is talking to, to Cher, and he's just like, hammering on about how life is meant to be. We're here to break, break our, our hearts, hearts, ruin it. That whole Don't you thing. love that line? It stays with me in all Me too. People. Me too. So when you're when you're doing a, a part like that, and you had great lines in that movie, when you're saying them, can you feel them being firmly planted in you, and those lines will stay with you? Some for, of them. Yeah. Some of them. Like there's one line that's my mother's, and we were doing an improvisation, and I said to her, "Your life is going down the toilet." That was my mother's line to me once. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Stick around. We're with Olympia right after this. All right, coming up, Moonstruck, such a classic, and what it really meant for Olympia next. Walking distances from D'Agostino's. Two blocks cross town, six short blocks uptown and downtown. I mean, that's how far I'd be willing to walk to a market. <clears throat> good. Very good, Miss Chimetti. There you go. She had one line in that movie. <laughs> 1974. And I was glad for it. That's Death Wish. I guess I made some money. That was all that movie meant to me. I just made a little money. Did you, when did you With feel? With three kids. I did anything and everything I could get my hands on. When did you feel like you were starting to settle, like this was working out for you? Oh, wow. You remember Romney, the guy who was running against Obama? Yeah. He was, was okay that he didn't pay taxes because he was a venture capitalist. You remember all that BS that was like, okay, I've been a venture actor all my life. I've never, I mean, there's been ne there hasn't been any certainty. And I married an actor. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're I'm always for looking for work. A guy who worked actually for a bunch of years up in Canada, Louis Zorich. Yeah. So I've never had security. And I realized, I had to be honest with myself, I don't think I ever wanted it. I think I liked the fact that it was, a, um, it was like a loose cannon. I think I liked that. Yeah. I mean, and it, because it made, I was able to choose this or choose that. I have to do this. I don't want to do that. I won't do this. I won't do that. I mean, I liked all of that. So when you say, has it ever worked out for me? That's what worked out for me, that um, I got to choose. I didn't get security. Didn't have that. And choosing the, is enough, right? What? Right? Choosing is enough. Yeah, being able to choose was... An, and so that did work out for me. I've heard people say that once they win an Oscar, they don't get the kinds of roles they want after no, it's hard. That didn't happen for me. But you, no. you got Steel Magnolias, didn't you? Yeah, then, I mean, that... You know, then Tales of the City and... And, and, and what most people don't know, because they know me mostly from the films, is I've constantly been working in the theater. Mm -hmm. Once I had my children, I didn't want to travel. So my son, Stefan, the youngest, goes into college, and what movie comes down the pike, as my mother would say? Which one? Loretta. Seriously? I'm telling you, that's what happened, Moonstruck. 
Moonstruck was the first one. It's like somebody said, look, she waited all these years. She Let's give her something good. <laughs> and, I, and it just, I mean, it was incredible. And then that changed my whole life. My daughter was going to college on credit cards when that, I did that movie, you know. And after that, I was, we were able to send our children to college with no problems. Jeez, just a, like, what did that relief feel like for you? Yeah, it felt like um, I, I was going to be an, a good parent. You know what it feels like when you can't do those things? You feel like you fail. But the fact that even though we, both, we chose this, we were able to somehow life turned turned out that we were able to do that made me feel that, um, you know, I had provided. How did you manage the conflict between the, the, that? Not well, I'll be honest with you. Does anybody handle it well? I don't know. Some, I don't know. Some, sometimes it was okay, but a lot of the times it was, it was difficult. Uh, one of my sons just had an operation the other day, and uh, I was insistent, and my schedule was so packed. I, I said, I've got, I want to go to the hospital. I want to go to the hospital. And I was crying. And, and my husband said, why are you carrying on this way? He's 45 years old. He was, you know, and I knew where it came from. Because I, there were times I hadn't been there. And I, damn it, I was going to get to this. And I did get to the <laughs> hospital. And he didn't have, didn't get breakfast. So I was able to go and buy him lunch. And I got him a newspaper and I, and it, you know, I know it's um, it's as beautiful. I, I though, did huh? it as much for me as I did it for him. <laughs> did you know that, that I was there? For, well, oh yeah, he knows. He's a <laughs> he's a smart guy. He... All right, coming up. If you could whisper one thing in Obama's ear, President Obama, what would you whisper? In oh ear? Lord. So you were on the show uh, on Cloudburst, but the first time I interviewed you was when you were doing Away From Her. Here's a clip from that. You, oh, you said yeah, something that sort of her. stuck yeah. with me. As I, as I watched my mother go in and out and you know, that, that kind of thing, I, couldn't, I kept thinking to myself, why is she still here? Her passing, that whole passage was for me, she was like a teacher. I said, I don't, I don't want to wait to open my heart like this. I want it to be, I want to be open-hearted. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That, my, that movie has a wonderful, I had a wonderful line in that movie. I'm trying to decide to be happy. Like, it's a great line. I thought, I thought, oh, can you imagine that? It's actually possible to make a decision like that. You don't have to wait for happiness. You can decide, okay, today I'm going to get up and I'm, Gonna have a happy day. Right. In that moment, the idea of you saying, even to yourself, I don't, I, I want to open my heart. Yes. That was in 2006. How's that going? Opening your yeah. heart. I'm, it's getting easier. It should. I'm 82. You think, <laughs> you think I'm gonna make it? I don't know. I think. <laughs> 82 yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Do, what, what do you think when you say 82 and then you instantly hear the reaction from people where they're like, 82? I always think, maybe I shouldn't say that I'm 82. Why do I say, well, I... I think you should, because this is a good 82. I'm thinking I'm 49, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> but this is a good 82. If this is what 82 is, it seems pretty great. Uh, my mother was like, I think it's my mother's genes. Mm -hmm. You know, she... Greek women age pretty, pretty good, I think. Pretty tough. Yeah, yeah I mean, There's one right back there. <laughs> my... Uh, my grandmother used to say, my yaya used to say, we age really well and we're pretty tough because of the kinds of men we have to put up with. Oh, that's true. That is true. <laughs> you know, that's what they say. I was thinking for you when, I, when I, I hear you talking about wanting to make a speak for people in a sense who don't have a voice. It's something we talked about before, just the idea you watched your father get into it with the church. Taking on the, yeah, yeah. yeah so you saw that kind of uprising early. Yeah, not, it's not only that, but I saw my parents, I realized they never stopped being interested in something, in studying. They both were constantly reading and constant. My father was writing all the time, and so was my mother. Mm -hmm. She was writing poetry. She was, I mean, this is a woman who went through high school, but there was a, in them um, 
a desire to, f to look into things and to find out about things. Did she read you her poetry? She would send me it. She never did read it. She would send it to me. Uh, she'd send me it. When you read it, what did you think? What were you feeling? I wish that she had, you know, had more support when she was younger. Do you say that with a bit of a sadness? When you say, I wish she had more support? Yeah, I wish that she had. But, uh, you know, her family, um, at the time, that was the Greek, com the Greek community. I mean, all of that kind of culturalization was something I wanted to get away from, and I did. Mm -hmm. I got away from it. I did not want that in my life. When I began to understand what it was, I knew I wanted away from it. How long did it take you to and get that? And my father was supportive. And was, he understood that? Oh, yeah. Which when was... I stopped wanting to go to the Greek church, my father said, well, what do you want to do? I said, I want to go to the Salvation Army with my friend Miriam Hale. And he, he, he said to me, OK, go. He said, but every Sunday when you come back up, I want to sit down and talk with you. So he, you know what I mean? He, it, it was, there, was, there wasn't just one way to live with my father. He understood that. That's pretty incredible that yeah. he would still find a way to connect with you yeah. through that chain. Anthropology questions, are you ready? Yeah. Who's anthropology. Anthropology. So I like anthropology. I'm I like archaeology. This is what we're, we're emotional archaeologists right now. This is what we're doing. Oh, is it? We're okay. digging and dusting and trying to find out what comes out. Oh. Speaking as someone who is uh, in, intimate with a presidential candidate, if you could whisper one thing in Obama's ear, President Obama, what would you whisper in Oh, ear? Lord. Stay the course. Stay the course that he set out. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Not always, I mean, you know. But he's had, I mean, what president has received, has had the, the incredible, incredible, contentious situation that he's dealt with. Do you think race plays a part of that in this oh, era? Oh, yes. Yeah? Oh, I mean, we have to be kidding ourselves if we think it doesn't. But is it a, a significant presence? I think so. I think Look, at all they talk about is compromise. Do they ever talk about collaboration? But the, yeah. But all the, I said, oh, we, we won't compromise. What about collaborating? Don't want, why don't they want to collaborate? Well, look, we have the same thing up here in Canada, right? There's no collaboration because it's only about their sides winning. Okay, that's, that's it. it. You know, which is kind of heartbreaking. And they think that the constituency takes pride in the fact that they won't compromise. And when what we want them to do is to figure out a way to, to do what we have to do in our lives. Manage it, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, don't we have to do that? Incredible. If, um... When I say New York, you say? Home. When I say Canada, you say? Work. When I say Grandma, you say? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's always a pleasure to see you. Oh, it's great. Wimpy Dukakis, everybody. Yeah, I'm... Thank you. Sex and Violence is the show. It's on Sundays. It's on Out TV. You need to check it out. We'll be right back.